Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the build of this amazing Skymaster A10. I almost said F18, A10. Stay tuned, we're continuing with the wings. Alright guys, so last video we got the flaps set up, we got the wiring harnesses done. This video we are starting to focus on the aileron portion, speed brake portion. So that's going to be the next steps that we focus on and uh, from there we'll continue adding our uh, pylons, gear and all that kind of stuff to the wing. But this is the, the next critical step for us, so let's dive into uh, the A10 build. All right, guys, last video I talked about not getting enough down aileron travel, which we are now getting. Uh, what I did for that was I trimmed about five millimeters of material off the back edge here, the trailing edge of the underside of the surface, and that now gives us enough movement to get our 40 millimeters of travel, which is what they recommend as a max. So now we've got the max, and uh, we should be good to go from there. So next big things that we're focusing on is the speed brake. So we've got a couple important things to do here. Number one, we've got to glue the control horns into the aileron itself. Now this is the setup that's used to control this surface. So we need to make two slots and glue those in. Obviously we don't want it to interfere with our movement here. So if we glue it in on the back side, of that little scale detail that should be reasonable for us. Something to think about is we do have a pylon that covers this area. So I believe they messed up on our pylons, uh, Skymaster did. These have a pretty distinct angle to them and the reason for that is it may be hard to see in the video here but the wings kind of have an upward angle and these pylons are angled like that to correct so they're sitting uh, flat essentially. So I think when I take the other pylon that's meant for the right wing, line it up here, our holes are spaced properly, and this left wing one, uh, the holes are not spaced properly. So fortunately we still can get into the mounting spots there, but uh, just something that I noticed. So if you look at the way this is all lined up, it, um, roughly that's where it's going to go, and our control system comes right through the back side there so uh, it's nice to know that uh, we can make that and it's basically going to be hidden uh, when this is all mounted so i think step number one we know we're going to be in line here so i'm going to get that servo mounted to our corner brackets we'll see how everything lines up see what kind of horn size we need and uh, we're going to get this servo working first all right guys, so I pretty much have the aileron servo and stuff all figured out there, so that's uh, that's taken care of. Next thing I'm doing is just setting up the speed brake servo. So it's a lot easier if you put the wing tube in the wing and have the aileron just drooping down like that. The live hinge um, easily bends like that. You just wanna be careful not to hit it sideways. So that gives us good access to get the servo installed. So I'm just kind of doing mock-ups here and kind of figuring out what we need to do to make this work. Getting the linkages made up. Now you'll notice in the Skymaster manual, they talk about lengths here. So as an example, it says 105 for flaps. Now what that actually is, is that is the length of rod you want to make up this linkage width. So as an example, this is the linkages that we used or the rod that we used to make up the flap servos uh, setup. And that's like 105 millimeters, which is what they call for in the manual. So the speed brake calls for 20 millimeter linkages. So the shortest rod that comes with the kit is 50. And it's not threaded all the way through. So fortunately I have some stainless steel 440 rod and I made up 20 millimeter linkages to get our speed brakes set up. 
So we need to make two of these linkage setups for the speed brake. So one side is the ball joint, the other side is the Sullivan Golden Clevis. And then I'm just playing around with geometry on these guys. Now the actual parts you glue into the speed brake surfaces are these carbon horns. They're kind of just a standard Skymaster carbon horn. So this part will be glued in this part will be sticking out. So again, just messing around with geometry and stuff here and kind of getting this uh, figured out. All right, guys, we got lots of stuff mocked up here. So I, I spared you the expense of like, look at me, I'm screwing in a servo. <clears throat> Anyways, so we got both of our control horns for the speed brake installed, set up, and uh, roughed into position. Uh, the servo arm is at full back travel or full negative travel is basically straight up and down. So our travel will be all the way forward and uh, servo is installed for the speed brake. So what I've done is basically run the arms forward and marked where our control rods need to go. Now because one's on one side of the servo arm and one's on the other, you've got two different spots there. Put some silicone where the wire for the speed brake goes through the wall here. So that will, uh, once it sets, that'll uh, cure nicely and protect the wire. And then we've got all of our servos and everything hooked up. I've also took a straight edge and marked straight down the servo arm onto the aileron itself. So now we've got the center arm or center location of that servo arm marked on the aileron. So next thing to do is basically um, use our Dremel and create our slots for our hinge points, our, our carbon rods or carbon control joint points. Whew, tongue twister. Anyway, so um, yeah, that, that's the next thing to do is the Dremel work there, Dremel work on the speed brake, and uh, that'll be basically the that stuff. We're gonna have to wait for it to cure and and set up before we can play around with it. But uh, big steps done. All right, guys. So we got everything glued in for or ready to glue in for the speed brake. So it's pretty straightforward. We just got a nice straight line based on our two control rods that are coming off the servo. And obviously you can see there that we've got the channels uh, completed. We did get the aileron glued in and now there is no hard points in the aileron surface for that. I'll show you on the other wing exactly what I'm gonna do, but we do have access either through this side because these horns sit right against the, uh, the plate that's in there. And we've also got access from that side. That hole was created by me. So anyways, we uh, are going to add a little bit of reinforcing in there as well too. So I'm just going to, as a last step tonight, just glue these guys in and let them cure. And we will be back tomorrow to, uh, to deal with the speed brake and see how she works out. All right, guys, we are making amazing progress on this wing. And we're getting very, very close to having all of the servos working. Now... Because each and every one of you guys are creative, you love watching my videos, that brings up a perfect time to introduce today's video sponsor, and that is Skillshare. If you've never heard of Skillshare, guys, Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes that are designed specifically for the curious. Skillshare has so many amazing topics, guys. Uh, graphic design, aerospace, marketing, time management. Those are some of the ones that I like. Right now, I'm currently watching a course. It's called Aerospace Engineering by Lewis Foreman, who's also an aerospace engineer. Lots of amazing takeaways from that course that really we can also apply to our model building as well, too. And uh, it's it's phenomenal as far as the stuff that you can learn from a, an aerospace engineer that's willing to share all that information. It's also designed in a very easy to learn atmosphere. There's no ads on the platform and they're always adding new topics, new courses for you to pick from. So Skillshare has reached out to me guys and the offer that they've allowed me to present to you is you can join the Skillshare community and get your first month absolutely free by using the link down below in the video description. 
So whether you're a beginner, guys, whether you're an expert at something, I'm sure you'll be able to learn something from Skillshare. Again, check it out, guys, down in the description below. There's a link. Get your one month free. Join the platform. It is phenomenal. It's amazing. All right, guys, it is the next day and all of our epoxy is nice and cured. So there's a shot of the aileron uh, system itself. And then we've got the speed brake set up here as well. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plug the aileron servo into the receiver and we are going to get this surface set up. So we are nice and level and everything and square. And then we can also trim off that little bolt there as well too. And that portion will be finished. Once we're done that, then we're gonna move on to the speed brake. All right guys, aileron is set up. Now I'm working on this speed brake and I'll tell you, it's a bit of a bear to get set up. So basically you're adjusting the linkages. Looks like because of the way we're not lined up here, looks like we need to make the top or this one a little bit longer, about one turn longer. And we need to shorten the underside or this side of the aileron uh, by about two turns. So we'll do that and see what happens. All right, guys, so a little bit of tricky stuff here going on with the air brake. So the manual shows using a plastic horn. Now, the problem with the plastic horns is a situation like this where we've got uh, quite a bit of force on those horns. You can see that there's a lot of play. And because of the length on there, our servo travel is very, very reduced, which changes the resolution of the servo. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that plastic servo horn the nylon JR one that I'm using, the super servo horns. And I'm gonna switch it out for these 15 millimeter Seacraft ones. Now, if you look at the layout here, so we were using the outside hole on the JR one, and we'll probably use the second from the center, or we'd be using the second from the center hole on the Seacraft one which would match up to there if that makes sense. So we're gonna switch that out for this aluminum one and that should make for a better feeling, better working air brake. So I'll switch that out and I'll show you guys the difference. All right guys, and there's a shot of the new setup. So that should be a lot uh, stronger. We also played with the geometry a little bit. So before, when I was all the way uh, negative or closed, I had the servo straight up and down and right now I've got the middle set straight up and down and uh, we can play with we can play with uh, the servo a little bit more because of that. So that arm should be a lot stiffer. So what I'll do is I'll put this back in the speed brake and uh, we're gonna have to play around with these linkages a little bit because we changed the geometry. We're using a shorter arm. So we will uh, see what happens there. All right guys, much better geometry on this thing and uh, way, way better. I think it's much more impressive with the aluminum arm. So when it's open now, it's just a lot stiffer. The aileron's not hooked up right now, but before it was very flexy and I felt like I could take these things and just fold them right back closed. And now it's a lot more stiff. So good call on the aluminum arm for the speed brake. I think that's a good change. Don't follow the manual for the plastic one and uh, happy that that is, uh, is done. All right, guys, next thing we're working on is the servo cover and we'll work our way that way. So we're gonna get this servo cover installed. We don't need to be super accurate with this, again, because this gets covered with the pylon. So we'll get that one done. We'll get the middle one done. And then we're not gonna do this one right away because we've gotta run our air lines to this point as well too, once we get the gear installed. So we're gonna do these two servo covers then install the gear, then do that servo cover, and then we'll finish off with the pylons. All right, guys, hatch number one is on, hatch number two is on. Ended up breaking one of these little screws off, so if you're building one of these kits, be careful. Um, very, very finger snug, not even finger tight, because they'll break. Um, they're pretty tiny, but... Uh, so next thing we're gonna do is we're going to bolt the gear on. I'm just gonna double check that I can get that fairing piece on with the gear on. And if that's the case, we're going to bolt the gear on and figure out where we're routing our airlines. All right, guys, so creative way to route the, uh, the lines here. So we used 
a hole right here. Uh, basically the three lines for the gear itself go right into that hole. Now because all this stuff runs on, underneath the connection to the flap, what I did was wrap the lines in snakeskin just to pr protect the, uh, the air lines and that's going to run all the way to the out put side of the base of the wing. So now what we're going to do is bolt that wing in. I haven't checked if the fairing piece fits on with the gear installed. We'll figure that out. We might be pulling the gear off again. We'll see. Okay guys, do not put your hole there. It doesn't work. Uh, everything's too close to the back end of the cylinder. So it just gets pinched up in this area. So we're going to move the hole closer to the front here and then the cables will have more of a natural loop and more play in there. Also, the fairing piece needs to go on before you put the gear on. You can't get the gear, the fairing on without with the gear installed. So also have to take the servo out uh, because we need access to all this stuff. So that's what we're doing. And uh, so now we're gonna put the fairing back on and then we'll put the gear in. All right guys, so fairing is installed. Uh, pretty easy to screw in. Basically they've already pre-made some holes back here and you've got good access at the front here as well too. So installed the fairing, installed the gear. We put a new hole kind of right in the center of the gear there, you can see it. So now we've fed all of the lines through that hole and uh, should work out just perfect. I'm just routing these lines for the lock, the gear lock, and I'm just routing those along the side of the fairing, the, uh, the outside edge of the fairing to keep everything out of the way. And uh, <clears throat> otherwise that's, uh, that's gonna work out great. So we do have to do a little bit of trimming on the front edge here, make sure our wheel clears and all that stuff, but uh, the wing is going together beautifully. We've got our lines coming out the end here for the airline, so that's all going to work well. And uh, we've got our green and yellow, which is for the lock. So the way I'm setting that up is green is going to be uh, unlocked, yellow is going to be locked. So that's the way I'm setting it up. This is the line that came with the kit, nice flexible line, and there should be enough to do this portion of, uh, of both wings. All right guys, just doing the final touches on the scale bits on this gear. So this piece here just simply bolts onto the scissor link with those two bolts. Everything's preset, predetermined, nice and easy. This middle piece that goes in between the rear door and the front uh, piece, uh, the big hole right there, bolts onto that bolt. The smaller one fits behind the strut here, right there. So we do need a small two and a half um, millimeter Allen key and nut assembly. So fortunately, we've got this lovely kit from rtlfasteners.com. Now, if you guys have never dealt with RTL fasteners before or use their stuff, phenomenal quality. And uh, you can actually use my discount code. It's JV30 listed down below as well too. And if you use that code, you will get 30% off your orders of $25 or more. So check them out guys, rtlfasteners.com. Phenomenal hardware packages and kits that they put together for you. Great stuff. They're all bolted on there guys. It's a nice tight fit with everything. And the other cool thing with this, as you watch the strut compress, everything works perfectly. So very, very cool. A couple of the final steps here is we're gonna have a little bit of sanding to do here, a little bit of sanding to do right there to make sure that the gear doesn't hit, but I'll show you guys. So what happens here is the brake line hits. So we need to just sand that corner off. And that's actually good with that. So basically all we have to do is sand that corner off and everything fits beautifully. All right, so one of the final touches here, guys, is I put a keeper down in the bottom of the wing there, and that's holding the air lines uh, to the top of the wing. And we used Gorilla Tape to hold the servo lines in. Uh, it's definitely permanent and it will uh, hold everything in place. So now all of those things are not going to touch that servo when it's, uh, when it's moving the main flap servo. So we're gonna get the flap servo bolted back into place. And last servo cover is installed guys and the wing 
is not done, but really close. So we still have our pylons to do, and we've got the pylon to cut out for this guy. And we've got a couple paint touch-ups here. Really not that impressed with the, the Skymaster paint. It's almost like the paint is very, very brittle. And, uh, you know, you look at an area like this where it's already started chipping off. So not really that impressed um, with the paint, but that's the way it goes. So guys, that is everything for this video. Again, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And thank you guys for watching the A10 build. Uh, it's been a great build so far. It's been a lot of fun and it's pretty cool to be able to put this plane together. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Don't forget about the RTL fastener discount code as well too, JV30 for 30% off your order. If you guys have any questions about the build, don't forget to list them down below. Please give the video a thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you aren't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button down below and turn notifications on. It's free to do and it also helps with the YouTube algorithm and it helps with the channel. And uh, that's it guys. So we will continue with this wing and uh, other awesome things with this plane in build video number three, which is gonna be the next build video. But until then guys, we will see you later and see you in the next video.